everybody. Nate Brown here, the Senior Director of Customer Experience at Arise Virtual Solutions, coming at you live from Nashville, Tennessee. And I've got a real treat today with Thomas Kinnon. Hello, Thomas. How are you, Nate? Good to see you. Good to see everybody here. Good to see you. You wouldn't know it, but Thomas just sprinted up the stairs. He made it to the finish line. Uh, we, we've got somebody really cool, everybody. This, this man, Thomas, uh, he has recently dropped a book uh, called The Big Leap. And he is he's a marketing genius. And you're about to find that out through his his brilliant uh, slideshow that he's got for us. I, I just recently read the marketing rebellion, Thomas. So I'm kind of fired up on this topic. I'm looking for authenticity through great marketing. I'm, I'm a student of, of this work and now your work. Uh, so I cannot wait for you to dive into this topic. So take us away. Good, sir. Fantastic. Nate, thank you so much. Stelios, thank you. And thank you for everybody that's here. I'm just going to kick it off right off the bat. We're going to start to share. Um, yeah, it, there's a couple of different ways we can look at this. And with, with regard to being a marketing guru, one of the first things I do is to discount people like myself at the beginning of the book. Uh, but I, I'll get to that in one second as an excerpt from our introduction. But what I'd love to do is spend 25 minutes sharing with you some of the a sneak peek into the way I think and a sneak peek into what I think is a, an emerging imperative for business. Uh, any business concern or any organization or any artist or any parent or any CEO or any startup or anybody trying to create value in the world. And uh, uh, one of the things I think I've begun to learn over my very long career up and down Madison Avenue around the world, working mostly inside of uh, marketing services agencies and the holding companies like D WPP and Omnicom, as well as in my own strategic consultancies, is that that companies uh, are not gonna be able to advertise their way out of the problems that we face right now. And, and those problems are everything from the world burning down around us to the rising floods, to the war and, and every, permanent wars everywhere, to the increasing um, uh, disc, uh, lack of, of, of resources and, and precarity for many, many people around the world. So I think that every business has to face up to being a better business and doing better business ends up being, I think, better marketing. The book that I wrote is the culmination of about, you know, 15 years worth of thinking about what I can do, what, can, what I can add to the world or what I can fix about the world instead of uh, breaking it as much of our, you know, I think, I fear uh, humbly that much of my marketing has done in the past in, in the form of more extractive advertising. I really do believe that, that the 14 insights that I share in this book, and this is volume one, I'm working right now on volume two. It just dropped, there's a link there to grab it for yourself. I'm teaching each of these chapters as modules inside of a range of, of both uh, graduate and undergraduate level um, uh, marketing courses around uh, in New York and, and, and in New England. Um, but in the in introduction, I say, as I, I just kidded about Nate, I'm not kidding. You know, be really careful who you listen to. Um, I really do believe that almost nobody has any idea what they're talking about. I mean, and that includes <laughs> old guys like me, for sure. And I do believe that nobody knows you like you do. And again, this goes out. I wrote the book for CEOs, for startups, for parents, for artists, for activists, for heads of nonprofits, for CFOs, for marketing directors, for anybody who's trying to figure out how to transform human insight into business value or into any kind of value and on the way there create some human value. I do believe that the, this is a, a radical revolutionary call for a more ethical marketing and that's what I'm trying to get at. There's a couple of things in here that we can talk about that make you know so, sort of provocative sense and one is this idea that I, I you know just in the last year or so landed on which is why I wrote the book um, is that it's not just about getting a better marketing you know, let's do more organic marketing. Let's do more value marketing. Let's do more authentic marketing. It's about changing the way our business behaves. It's about a better capitalism. And, and, and that's, that's an ambitious, you know, brief. Um, and I think it's, as I say, I think there's two choices we have to make. One, we, you know, we are faced right now. And again, everybody who, from, that has a, any control over what happens next in the world of their business organization or whatever is we can we can continue down this path, um, which I think everybody from the UN to, to nonprofit groups, to advocacy groups, to business groups will tell you it has only got another 30 or 40 years left in it. You know, if you look at the stock price for, 
for for you know the <laughs> the, the arms industry. You look at the stock price for the petroleum brands. I'm, and I apologize if there's any petroleum brands or arms industry representatives on in in, in the conference. But they, they, they've, you know, they're going crazy because, you know, they've only got, you know, another 10, 15, 20, 30 years worth of life in them. And then, you know, fossil fuel is gone and the world's gone. So the, I think that every single one of us is a deer in the headlights, a global existential deer in the headlights. So we can stick with this for sure. Or we can decide to take a big leap, very, very big leap. And this leap is about being extraordinarily honest with ourselves and extraordinarily insightful about what is to be done. And I think that this new everything brief, I'm a strategy guy, I've spent my entire career, you know, writing brief, doing research, coming up with insights, writing briefs, writing strategies, writing plans. So I think this, there's, there's what I'm calling the new everything brief. And pardon the, you know, the, 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 the occasional New Yorkism, but uh, <laughs> that's what you rolled up for. I think the brief is to be real as fuck. I really do. And it, this entails a kind of empathy that is unknown in the halls of business and, and, and marketing, you know, uh, uh, offices and, and brands and, and VPs of everything. Empathy, humility, and grace, I do believe, are these new, literally the new value-making character traits for each one of our careers. And this goes for the kids that I teach, you know, three or four or five times a week inside of grad and undergrad courses here in New York, then it goes for, you know, the interns that, that, that I mentor, it goes for my, it, it goes for my colleagues, it goes for my kids, it goes for you. Is that if we want to have fulfilling careers in the world of business, in the world of marketing, in the world of brands, in the world of technology, in the world of startups, in the world of making value, I think that we have to take a completely different approach. And there's three keys here, as I say, empathy, and these are just quick definitions. But I want to inspire us because I think that the, 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 the 14 chapters as you know, sort of insights that I've developed for the an Ethics of Insight in volume one of The Big Leap, all are based upon us recognizing something inside ourselves that maybe we don't see every morning when we wake up in the mirror. And it's something I think that, that again, me, you, my students, my kids, your kids, your colleagues, people you hire, the partners you work with, the clients you have, all have to deep, dig deep down and see whether or not these three character traits are waiting in there or can be nurtured. Empathy is about the imaginative projection of a subjective state into an object so that that object appears to be infused with it. Oftentimes we say to ourselves, well, the difference between empathy and what makes it different, special, and sympathy is sympathy was, oh, I get, I get your problem. And empathy is, I feel your problem. It actually is deeper. Because if you read this really carefully, the imaginative, empathy is an act of imagination, projection of a subjective state, right? The subject, me, the object, you. The imaginative projected, projection of a subjective state into an object so that that object appears to be infused with it. This is about confusing you with and for me. This is very dangerous. This is very scary. This is very hard. This is very, very, very opportunistic. We can figure out how to become more empathetic in our day, in our life, in our world. The second key to this new character trait I think that's required is this idea of humility. And this is an easy one, right? I looked up humility and, and, and sure enough, Uncle Wagnall gets it right. Freedom from pride or arrogance. Freedom? Most, most, of, most of us would view humility as sort of a, a weakness or a retreat or a, a subdued or, 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 you know, a quietude or, you know, nah, this is a liberating aspect of the new, I think, character required to do a different kind of businessing, freedom from pride or arrogance. You know, one of my favorite uh, you know, if, if there is a marketing genius or guru that I do believe is, is, is qualifies to, for, for, for that encomium, it is a guy named Seth Godin, who's probably, I don't know, Seth, I know you're not here today, I don't think, but probably almost as old as me and infinitely smarter, more experienced. And he, he talks about this idea of humility in really clear terms in his book, This is Marketing. And he literally says, look, we just, we, we show up to serve. I made this for you, he says. That's our marketing. That's how he defines marketing. That's how we're defining a new kind of business behavior. 
And the third is this idea that doesn't show up in too many textbooks <laughs> or, or lectures or, or how-tos in, in a better business thing, but this sense or this uh, affect of grace. And, and it is, and again, defined by the, by the dictionary, it's a seemingly effortless beauty or charm of movement, form, or proportion. Now, this, this is, that seems to describe a state of uh, uh, aesthetics, not ethics. But aesthetics are key to this new behavior, this new businessing, this new, eventually, this better capitalism that comes from a better marketing. So these three keys, I think, are really, really, really important. And, and, and if, you're, if you're up for it, for the, we, we leave each other today, I'd love to talk about what do you think they're possible? Because I'm looking for feedback. But because I, I think we're moving from the, the, you know, this, what, what some call late capitalism or the accelerated neoliberalism or whatever, I think the crucible here awaits us. And I think that you know, tomorrow, that's where the crucible is for you, for me, for our businesses, for our families, for our organizations, for our communities. So better capital, I know a lot of people that don't believe it's possible, but I don't think we have a choice. I think we have to aspire towards literally a reimagining of what it's like to be in the world together with our businesses and our customers and our partners and our, and our worlds. So ethics, what the fuck? Yeah, ethics and business. I had, a, I had a program director at a university a couple of years ago, two years ago. It's what made me write the book. And I said, I said, listen, I'd love to be able to build, um, you know, sort of a little lab inside of the university. I've been trying to do this, you know, um, you know I've been doing one-offs with consulting projects for brand, big brands and businesses would come to the universities and, and, and put a brief in. And I'm I was trying to formalize that and, and create a lab around ethics and impact, I said. And this, the program director, who I respect deeply, said, I just don't think anyone's ever going to buy it. I don't think anyone believes it's possible. And I thought, maybe he's right. Ethics? People say, what the fuck, ethics? Nah. I say, yeah. And that's why I wrote the book. What's that mean? And ethics suggests a system of values. That's why we talk about those three you know, characteristics of the human condition that we have to work on together. And ethics consists of the fundamental issues of practical decision-making. It's about behavior. And its major concerns include the nature of ultimate value and the standards by which human actions can be judged right or wrong. Now, I'm not a great moralist. I'm much more of a, you know, a <laughs> I'm a bit of a relativist when it comes to certain things. But I do believe that in, it, it's the, the definition of ethics is not just where my morals, you know, bump into yours, which I think has been a traditional way of understanding it. The definition of ethics is, is a, a, a validated, authentic nature of human value creation as praxis. And there's this great fancy word I picked up from my philosophy. You know, I read a lot of philosophy. I'm, I'm sorry if I bore you with some of the uh, axioms I, I steal from there shamelessly. But what I have understood from that is this idea of praxis, P-R-A-X-I-S. And from a different kind of praxis, which is taking our ethics and our insights and our strategies into, into the world, into market, we have the opportunity to, in this crucible of a better capitalism, I think on our journey towards a better businessing that leads to a better kind of marketing. I think that we are in the business here of creating a whole new set range of, of, and depth and nature of impact. So I think that what's required for this new better capitalism or better businessing that comes up with a better marketing is our fresh insights. I spent a lot of time in my world going in and, and using mostly observational, mostly ethnographic, mostly deep listening, digital ethnography or video ethnography as research methodology to get at these fresh insights. Because if we're not gonna be able to advertise our way out of the problems that we face as businesses and organizations, I think that we're gonna have to find, we can't use those old advertising insights. And believe me, I've spent many years on Madison Avenue. I know how these insights get recycled. We need fresh insights, insights and that, inform this new ethics that drive and leverage human desire instead of trying to stimulate it with advertising, we serve it. And this creates a whole different kind of impact in people's lives. This creates impact where our behavior in the world, you know, there's not a lot of cases yet, but I look at, you know, Patagonia and, thing, and businesses like that, that literally are in the business of creating social currency for and with their employees, their partners, 
and their customers. They're hero advocates. And ultimately, when you enter into these social economies, the people that matter to the business, the people that matter to the brand, ultimately, we leverage this social currency creation to amplify our value, to create and expand our value. So instead of every brief coming with, you know, grow, 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 it comes from impact, impact, impact. And I think this turns into an, an entirely different way of not just behaving, but being or becoming in the world as a business. Okay. I talk about Patagonia. This, this to me is one of my favorite cases. I teach this, there are not too many of these I can look back on. I'm trying to help you know, businesses imagine their own Patagonia-like moment. But this famously was uncovered two or three years ago where you know, all of a sudden somebody you know, let CBS News know that Patagonia cut off you know, the, the investment banks and other, other institutions that they didn't feel comfortable partnering with in these co-branded best. So all of a sudden, all the, you know, I'm, I'm a New Yorker, you know, I spent a lot, I, I know these, I used to know these guys all over the place. You, you couldn't, you know, you go downtown, you go midtown, you see these banker bros with their vests, you know, it was a look, it was a thing, it was a style. And Patagonia said, that's, the, those aren't our people. We're not gonna hang out with them. And so is that marketing? Is that, it, it, some would judge that to be reverse marketing. Are you kidding me? You just killed a partnership with the largest, the three largest, you know, investment banks on the planet. That's just, that's suicide. That's marketing suicide. Nah, not if you're Patagonia. Not if you're, and again, they didn't, they didn't promote this. This got discovered and they had to explain it. In fact, they didn't even explain it. They, you know, so the statement came from Patagonia, not from Patagonia, but from an unnamed retail partner saying, yeah, you know, I don't know. They're just picking who they hang with, yo. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, people. This new businessing, this is how it becomes a new kind of marketing. And this is, you know, this, 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 you know, I, I hesitated to conclude this, but I can't help myself. This to me is the logic of, of, of the, the foundational logic to getting to this new brief is we knew we apply fresh insight. In fact, we go out and mine, we surface fresh insight through fresh, deep ethnographic observational research, like deep listening, digital ethnography, video ethnography, in situ ethnography. And we name human desire in, a, in the context of a very particular culture. And when we name that desire, that's our insight. We write a brief. And these briefs, I think, have the potential for unlocking an extraordinary degree of enduring value. One of the things that people talk about, well, you know, we talk about a more organic marketing or more social marketing or less advertising. And the media guys especially say, yeah, that doesn't scale. Bullshit. If you can get people to buy into what you do because of why you do it, like Simon Sinek says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it because it reminds them of them. You want scale? You start acting more empathetically. You start acting with humility. You start acting with some grace and you will get people's attention. You will get the people that matter to you's attention and they will bring people like them with them. And that's how the insights, these fresh insights become generative. So what I thought I'd do is tick really quickly in five minutes. I'm just gonna reach over to do a time check, Nate, so I don't, we're getting close to it. We got three minutes, so it's gonna be a three minute sampler. Two um, chapters from the, uh, the Big Leap we just dropped last week, uh, two weeks ago. It, one of them is advertising is death. You know, I, I lost a lot of colleagues <laughs> with, with just the name of chapter two. I don't think they're gonna read the book either. Um, but I wanted to at least contextualize for you the central premise of this chapter is that we've been we've been we've been doing the same kind of advertising since you know since soap operas and, and you know with the, with the key to unlocking you know the broadcast industry in the 20s with radio, and in a time in between then we've had you know you know people culture critics you know sociologists philosophers you know critique what was going on and then and saying, well, you know, we maybe want to be a little careful about this. And it all ended up as we're famously aware of with the surveillance platforms like Facebook, now Meta and Google, now Alphabet that have monetized our attention to the point of, 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 of I think eventually not too, not too far away, complete overload. And I think what we do now is what happens next. But this is why I think relying on advertising is not the key to change the nature of our business. My colleague, Dr. Fu, Dr. Augie Fu has been chasing these, these incredible statistics and calling out the bots and the fraud and the ridiculous level of, of, of extractive negative value 
that the advertising, the, the digital advertising platforms have generated. And it's completely ridiculous. It's unpretty. It's not cool. It's not where we want to go. People like our friend Mark Pritchard have been calling this out for a while. And once again, he calls for cleaning up supply chain. I don't think it's happening. I don't think it's going to happen. Our job is to raise kids, to hire people, to, to work with partners that say enough is enough. Let's figure out a different way to go to market. And then I'll leave you with just a little bit. What, what am I, I think one of the key chapters in the book is this idea that social is a bank. And it is, I think, the key to unlocking this future value, this, this, this sense of worth over growth, this sense of scalable, you know, organic scale of getting people that, 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 that get us, go get other people that get us with them. There's a fantastic text that you may or may not have read called, Marcel Ma uh, called The Gift by Marcel Maus that looks at this extraordinarily deep historical vein of, of, of giving that has connected cent a century or millennia worth of communities. And I think that's where we got to go back to. One of the central theses is a gift that does nothing to enhance solidarity is a contradiction. And I think that one of the things that we have to recognize is what are the opportunities inside of our current marketing budgets to start testing a different way of showing up, a different praxis. Don't just say that, well, this, this is our purpose, this is our why, and this is our corporate social responsibility, these are our mantras, or this is our, these are our, that's our PR. Yeah, uh, uh. How we behave, how we show up, it's not what we say, it is what we do. And I don't think you can do this with advertising. So anyway, that's my fast rant, Nate. I know it's a lot and I, I talk too fast, but this is the job. Don't forget, eat your lunch. Lunch is important, by the way. People talk about it. And make a little bit of trouble. Any, any thoughts, any questions? Push back. Oh my gosh. Am, am, I, am I heard? Uh, Thomas, if we were together on stage, I, I'd be giving you the biggest high five, the biggest hug right now. It, it's absolutely incredible. Thank you for your courage, for your wisdom that you're dropping out here. It, it's remarkable. It's remarkable. I, I have so many thoughts. I, I hate that we have five minutes, uh, but empathy, humility, grace. H how did you arrive at those three? You know, it's funny because I, I never set out to arrive at any three things. I just all of a sudden realized when I was trying to summarize, you know, this, the, 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 the way in to a different kind of, 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 of awakened, you know, value marketing, I thought that it, it's so human that what, what, would I, what would I think it's like to move into a new neighborhood? Or what's it like to, to, to start a new business? Or what's it like to get, go to a new school? And, and how are you judged? And what do you do to try as hard as you can to be real and authentic and open and ready to meet new people? And to me, that those are the three things that, that seem enduringly important. I love them. I love all three of those words. I've just never put them together in that yeah. way. And I think it's brilliant. So I, I feel like there's a, a bit of a thing that's happened where business talk about ethics, but many of them give the illusion of sustainability and stop there. H have you noticed that? Where, where, where are businesses getting stuck on this ethical category? And one of the biggest problems is that, that and you know, famously, you pick, you pick up Ad Age Ad Week and every three months, there's another story about you know, the short tenure of CMOs, right? And, and you know, it, it, you know, it's, 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 it's axiomatic now. That wow. the average senior you know, it leads two, two years, two and a half years. And I think it's because the brief sucks that no one knows what to do with a CMO. No one knows because 80 years ago, there were no CMOs, you know, and, yeah. and now we got them, but we don't know what to do with them. And, and so I think the, the problem is that the separation between marketing and businessing is enduring. And so therefore you can come up with all the PR or corporate social responsibility, all the purpose statements in the world, but, and you can market, you can write briefs for them and do marketing or advertising or social or emails with those, those, those beliefs, those, those purpose statements. They're not in the boardroom. They're not, they're not in the deal cutting room. They're not in, in the world where we make our products. They're not in the world where we do pricing. They're not in the world where we select our partners. And they're the rules of, 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 of cutthroat, you know, business continue to reign. Wow, 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 wow. I, I read a quote from Denise Yohn recently uh, talking about how consumers don't believe advertising rhetoric at all anymore. We, we ruin that for ourselves. They, they believe like 16% of what is put on a website, what, what they believe is, is what one customer says to another. They believe each other. So we have this, this customer-driven ecosystem of authenticity in which the business has no control. And so it feels like marketing and customer experience have come together in a new way. W would you agree? Yes, completely. And I think that the most important people in marketing uh, become this new like vanguard of community managers, of content producers, of, 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 wow. of, of social analysts, and people that are out literally out there on the other side of the fence 
you know, popping up inside Reddit, popping up inside of TikTok, popping up inside of, of LinkedIn, they popping up inside all these in organic environments where people are and saying, hi, I'm from, I'm from uh, Ikea. And boy, are you right about that. And, we, and I'll take the hit. I'll take the hit. But let me send you a link. And I think we can help. And that's the kind of business. That's, that's what new businessing looks like. And that's what the new marketing feels like. I love it. I love it. Okay. One, one last thought here. So what, what, is, what is perpetuating today's capitalism? Is it selfishness? Is it greed? I mean, how, how could I, as a mid-level director, yeah, start yeah. To, to try and infect others around me and turn the tide to those words of empathy, humility, and grace? Yeah, well, you know, boy, that's it's the sixty-four trillion dollar question, Nate. And, and I would have to say it's deeper than greed. It's about it's it comes down to it's my job. My job, you know, you get a job and you you know you're getting paid three hundred thousand dollars a year to run a budget for a brand, yeah. and you make an investment decisions all day long about what to, what to put into product marketing, what to put in, in, in events, what to put in PR, what to put in retail, what to put in merchandise, and you're making those decisions constantly based upon this brief to increase every year, year over year, four percent, eight percent, ten percent market share, sales, profitability, revenue. And as long as that's the brief, you're just going to continue to do what you do. It's a zero sum competitive environment. And it's, it's a race to the bottom. It's nothing but blood in the water. And until we shift, until one person with a budget says, I'm going to try something different, it'll always be the same. Wow. 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 Well, I mean, to, to maybe end with a thought around John Coder and his brilliant framework of leading change, the number <laughs> one thing he talks about is establishing a sense of urgency and lighting a fire under people, otherwise they're not going to change. And so Thomas, if, if you haven't just lit a fire under some people, then it's not going to be lit. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nate. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone. All right. Peace out. Thanks, everybody.